You're listening to Feel Good Astrology with Louisa Tanner Munson. To request a personal reading with Louisa, go to www.feelgoodastrology.com. Hi, it's Louisa Tanner Munson, and I've got another little Saturn recording for you based on um, the idea of parenting and parent themes. Because I think that's, and responsibility, they're my core themes at the moment, the things that I find very fascinating. Because people are often quite surprised when I'm able to talk um, about what their parents were like when I look in their birth charts and they're really really quite shocked by it now if you've listened to some of my um earlier uh mp3s you'll know that I've I've um openly said that the fourth and the tenth houses in astrology represent our mothers and fathers or our main caregivers and you'll find there's um, a very big disagreement in astrologers. Some of them are very, very strict and say the 10th house represents the father and the 4th house represents the mother. I say, and this is just my version, is the 10th house represents the most outward and authoritative parent and the 4th house represents the um, more timid but more nurturing um, and um and, and usually these are, you know, the fourth house represents the mum and the tenth house represents the dad. So in theory, uh, you know, I do agree that they are the usual norms, but I have seen them swap in in different people's charts according to, you know, how the dynamics of their parents were. You know, sometimes there is a strong career careerist mum um, who is slightly more um, reserved and slightly more detached. And sometimes there's a really empathic dad that is there. So... You know, that's always one way that we can tell parents who our parents are from our birth charts. Now, the other way of looking at parents, and again, this is where another place where uh, astrologers are torn, is um, who, which planets represent our parents. Now, um, lots of people used to say the sun represents the dad and the moon represents the mum because the sun's effectively masculine and the moon is effectively feminine. Um, I agree with that. I also um, use Saturn as a sign for the dad um, as authority or, um, because Saturn is to do with rules, regulation, structure and I mean everything needs a structure around it to be able to flourish. You know most things, uh, most organic things that grow very, very slowly, you know they even, even they find their own structures and it might just be that the weather um, and the soil type are the structures that allow things to grow but if you get the structures right you know, there will be growth beyond the childhood. And that's where the, the fatherly role comes in. And I think Saturn is useful. Um, now for the mother, I think the moon is important, but I also use dwarf planet Ceres. Um, Ceres is, um, if you look at, at Roman mythology, um, Ceres um, is actually, strictly speaking, the daughter of Saturn. <laughs> but Ceres is to do with fertility, sowing seeds and nurturing the seeds it's about harvesting um, our yield it is um, about nourishment Sarah's also looks after the local laws so has some kind of jurisdiction over um, the little people um, and there is an understanding of natural law and all sorts of things that you would expect to come from motherly energy so um, I use the Sun and Saturn and Ceres and Mars to represent the f mother and father. And like I said, I think those roles are interchangeable. So um, um, uh, to be really honest, I use Sun and Saturn to represent the most authoritative, authoritative parent who is more out in the world as represented by the 10th house because the 10th house represents when we have left the home and are moving out into the world. And then um, I use Ceres and the moon to represent the more nourishing um, parent that had more to do with us in our early childhood and represents all the things that got put in us at an early age that would help us move forward eventually. But it's about nurturing in the early stages. So I look at both of those. And um, what, I, what I find is the relationships between... Um, Saturn and the sun and also Ceres and the moon 
um, where they're harsh and and difficult, i.e. represented by squares or oppositions, that often represents parents that are odds with each other um, or that their relationship is just very, very difficult and um, unresolved. It often shows up in the charts of people um, with divorced parents or with an absent parent. Um, when the the Saturn sun complex and the Ceres moon, you might find that one of the planets is, is the stronger one. So if the Saturn is stronger than the sun, take that to be the dad. Um, and if Ceres is stronger than the moon, you know, look at Ceres to be the mum. But the relationships between the two really speak great volumes. And where there's a, a, a more harmonious aspect between them, that describes parents that kind of stick together. You might not always really like your parents very much, but the parents will stick together and give quite a united front. And that's really important when, you, when you're looking in the charts of, um, of people um, and in, indeed looking at your own charts. It's really useful to see the kinds of influences that you've had because you, you probably feel the influences anyway because you've, you've presumably grown up <laughs> to a level where you're supporting yourself and looking after yourself. So you've become your parents in many ways, you know, as you get older. Um, but you, you can then check in your birth charts with, you know, you know, how, you know, what was going on with my dad or what was going on with my mum? And you can actually use the aspects to Ceres and the moon um, to get more of a description about your mother. And you can use Saturn and the sun to get more of a description about your father. So, for instance, um, the house that Saturn is in, um, you know, if your Saturn is in the eighth house, you might have had quite a severe father who was quite punishing or quite a sexual father you know a father that was a bit of a jack of the lad you know jack the lad um the eighth house is to do with secrets and sex and control and the birth and death and all the real sort of um difficulties if you had saturn in the 11th house you might have a dad that's um um possibly you know, less emotional than an eighth house dad. But you might have a dad that's fairer. It might be a little bit more distant, but a fairer and somebody who is organised and works with authorities or works with groups, somebody possibly a group leader or somebody, but somebody who's a bit more community minded. Um, and again, the um, positions of Ceres through the houses and the moon through the houses also describes your mother or your father. Um, and you can really build up a very, very strong picture. When you add in your siblings as well, um, it's interesting in family astrology when you look at um, siblings. So, um, you know, because astrology is like a snapshot of the family constellation. Um, in my own chart and that of my sister, both of us have moon in Pisces Um and our mother actually is a Pisces. I mean, that's quite unusual. <laughs> um, but where your moon is describes the kind of personality that your mother might have. So even though, um, you know, irrespective of whether um, our mother is a Pisces or not, my sister and I experienced her in quite an emotional way. Pisces is a very emotional sign and also a sign that is not very barriered. So um, Pisces, as a general rule, feel everything and um, can really fall into victimhood quite easily because they feel so delicate um, and feel like they need protecting. So where your moon sign is, um, especially if your siblings all share that moon sign or the aspects from your moon are very, very, diff uh, very similar and, and build up a similar picture, it's actually describing your mother. I'm quite fascinated um, because I was wondering how I would show up in the charts of my two children. And um, both of them have an air moon, um, which really surprised me because I only have one planet in air and I'm not very airy. But actually, at the stage in my life, when they've come into my life, I'm um, not as emotional as I was in the first half of my life. Um, <clears throat> because I've 
come to terms with a lot of my um, emotional difficulties, as we all do, we grow through them. And I guess now um, that I've that they've come into my life, they've met me at a time when I'm quite philosophical um, and think things through and very, very thought based, you know, listening to lectures and things like that and, and talking about um, different methods of thought and non-attachment and things like that. So I really come across as an heir to them. That's how I'm reflected. And similarly, you know, how your dad is reflected is reflected by um by Saturn or the Sun. So hopefully that's um, a nice little introduction and an exploratory point for you when you're looking at your birth chart, but also the birth chart of your siblings, your parents. Um, it really does also tie in with um, the um, transactional analysis MP3 that I've recorded as well. So have a listen to that podcast um, if this is something that's of interest to you. Anyway, if there's anything you'd like to talk through, then just give me a shout. Take care for now. You've been listening to Feel Good Astrology with Louisa Tanner Munson, and this recording has been made possible by all you lovely supporters at Patreon. To request a personal reading with Louisa, go to www.feelgoodastrology.com.